What if I told you Shakespeare never wrote a single word? Hello, welcome to a special Ben and Christie edition of What the Flick. We're going to talk about Anonymous, which, I don't know, has Shakespeare scholars a Twitter? Does it have Shakespeare scholars a Twitter? I don't know. I, when I went to a screening... I don't think they, Shakespeare scholars Twitter, first of all. They, they do a niambic <laughs> yeah. pentameter. Yeah. Um, no, I went to a screening of it, and there were all kinds of Shakespeare um, experts there, and they were all very excited that, A, this was going to get people talking about Shakespeare, and B, they were excited about the, the Oxfordian theory being out there for consumption. I was not going to use the, the, the word Oxfordian. I just did um, it for you. So mm -hmm. uh, here's the story uh, behind uh, Anonymous. It is a sort of an alternate history of the genesis of Shakespeare's work, set in Elizabethan England, sort of uh, told over a couple of different time periods. We get a young Elizabeth and an old Elizabeth. And there is a suggestion that the Shakespeare's works weren't necessarily, uh, well, certainly weren't written by Shakespeare, but really were, were the genesis of a power struggle to find out who would succeed Elizabeth, because of course she was the virgin queen, except as we learn in this movie, she was no virgin, she was merely the unmarried queen. Mm -hmm. uh, good luck figuring out who's who in the trailer. I couldn't do it <laughs> over a two hour movie. That was my biggest issue uh, with the film, uh, was figuring out who was whom. It does and, back and forth in time a lot, and the two time periods oh, don't that, look all that different, no. and neither do the people in them. Right. So it's well, kind of hard to But determine. that's the key, the people in them. I mean, right. I felt like my dad all of a sudden. I mean, I <laughs> Who's couldn't. Who's that? Everybody's got <laughs> hair to hear, everybody's got a beard, and everyone apparently is Elizabeth's son. <laughs> um, she but, did it a lot, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I, by once I either figured that out or, as I did in Band of Brothers, just decide that it doesn't matter. I, that made me more comfortable. It is confusing, but but Reese Ifans is so great in he, this. He you, anchors everything yeah, and, that might seem confusing. And you know, he plays the Earl of Oxford, right. and he, a, a person who had a uh, when he was young had a romantic interest in Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and this sort of power struggle to find her successor sort of emanates from that relationship in right. many ways. It's, um, it is kind of fun, the idea that, that the real person named William Shakespeare is actually this illiterate, drunken buffoon. Yeah. And they just, they, they use his name just to get someone's name on this material because the Earl of Oxford couldn't have his, his name on it. Right, he's the on real. On stuff like Richard III, which is critical right. of the this royalty. Is, and, well, and it was interesting because this is not... Uh, you know, this doesn't suggest that uh, Christopher Marlowe actually mm. wrote it, and it doesn't suggest that Francis Bacon wrote it. It's just, it, it's very specific here that it's this, and again, which, which makes sense, in my limited knowledge of Shakespeare, that these were written by somebody, by a nobleman. Because he knew too much. He knew and too much. And he was much, too right. educated. Too educated, right. right. Mm -hmm. And that Shakespeare just comes out accidentally, like, because he's drunk, and he's like, that's me, knowing that they're looking for some name. Right. It's, um, it's very... Pulpy and tawdry, and it was directed by Roland Emmerich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did like Independence Day in 2012, and this is a very different kind of material for him, although it's in some of the big aerial kind of sweeping shots, you see the work of somebody who is used to making gigantic blockbusters with lots of CGI people getting destroyed or, or whatever. Um, so it was a very, very different kind of material for him. It gets really soapy. It does get very soapy. And it really hammers home some points that are obvious. And there's lots of blubbering about the greatness of Shakespeare. There's lots of quoting of some really obvious, most famous Shakespearean lines. Like, they don't do the entire balcony scene, but they do do, you know, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks. They do to be or not to be. They do now is winter of our discontent. Like, it's like a greatest hit to Shakespeare. And, and maybe you have to make it accessible to everybody by having yeah, the most obvious stuff. I don't stuff, think you needed all it, of them. But it feels like very on the nose to me quite often. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And then, uh, but then also when the moment came that, that the, clearly that these plays were meant to represent actual people in the power in Elizabethan England, they really, it felt like that that was spelled out 
too clearly for us. Mm -hmm. There was no, like they had to say, okay, now, like w there's a moment where they're like, oh, this guy's a hunchback. And I was like, I didn't even remember that the guy they were imitating was a hunchback. They literally had to tell me yeah. again. So I thought there was some sort of lost, they didn't really build much suspense. It was almost like he got told, okay, now's the point where it's suspenseful. And then at the moment when there's the attempted power play by two different sides sort of simultaneously, I didn't even quite realize that this was the sort of significant seminal moment in the movie. Yeah. Um, but that said, he, he's, uh, Reese Siphons is great. He is. It. They're all pretty good in it. Yeah, and, there's a very fun, cool gimmick where Vanessa Redgrave and Billy yeah, Richardson, cool. who are mother and daughter, both play Elizabeth I at different times, and they're both very sexy and vital and, and funny and daring. And Yeah, these were good Elizabeths. These were very good Elizabeths. <laughs> very, very human Elizabeths. Yeah. So anyway, uh, what, is you, uh, what are you going with? Uh, like a six and a half? Mm, I think you liked it a little more than I did. Okay. I was really frustrated by not being able to tell people apart, and yeah. I, I don't think it's just because I'm an idiot. It was no, difficult. It's off-putting. It it's, is. It's off-putting, and mm -hmm. it's important. You need to know because mm -hmm. you need to know literally who's pitted against whom at these critical moments. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't even know who they're related to. I don't know who's. I don't know who's on what side. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I don't know why this scene, which seems to be simmering with tension, yeah. why it's tense. So, yeah. uh, but that I said, I'm going to give it a five and a half. Okay, so our average is six. Average I just did math on the fly. How about that? All right. Bye, thanks.